we are in a session regarding what's going to happen from now on. And this session was supposed to be um, uh, started with doctor, uh, with somebody who passed away last week. So I would like to start by asking you, uh, what, where are we headed? The truth is, is that you can never know what Oded would have said. That's true. And he was always more creative than anyone else. He saw things that nobody else would see. But yesterday I was uh, bereaved. I was at a bereavement ceremony. I was, uh, and uh, he, he, they knew, his, his family members knew what the first sentence would be. And the first sentence was Oslo, the Oslo Agreement, was Zionist's finest, last finest hour. Really? That's amazing. Do you agree with that? Uh, we won't repeat what people said here all day because we have to look at what's up ahead. I'm sure that Oded would also tell us what's up ahead. I worked with him on all kinds of projects, including the return to the Jordanian option. That's also a, a, a not topic we worked on. Unfortunately, we it didn't end up with a summary that we could publish, but we worked on all kinds of options, and uh, we can talk about them. We can say a few words about them. Okay, look, one of the basic and personal level, one of your goals is to I'm sorry, there's a sound issue with the speaker. We're trying to resolve it. So this one state, is it a binational state? Is it an apartheid state? What is this one state that you're so fearful of? I think that there's a bit of a conf there's a bit of confusion among the public because when they, they say one state and everybody, uh, different people see different things when that comes to mind. And the more accepted term here is the binational state. What is a binational state? It uh, doesn't really give a space for two nations to coexist. The View Peel Commission has already said that there's absolutely no way that these two nations would coexist. Let's go back to history. You know, they discovered this long before we did, but there are basically three models for a, uh, a single state. One a state of all of its citizens that doesn't have one single uh, national identity, but it, there all of the citizens have equal rights. Uh, and by the way, this is part of the dream that we heard today from the people that are field officers here. Uh, this is what the Palestinians are dreaming of. The second option is uh, what they call a binational state, which will allow two nations to coexist with equal rights as well. This also has a bi binational or equal rights, like the Belgian model. Okay, and the third model is having a single state with Jewish superiority. In other words, the Jews have all of the rights, and the Palestinians have limited rights, just like in East Jerusalem. They're residents. They can, uh, they can uh, vote for the city hall, but they can't vote for the Knesset. They aren't civ uh, citizens. They don't have full civil uh, citizen rights. I'm not sure that they'd allow us them to to go to the beach as they, you know. So, so uh, all of those three realities are problematic. Each one of those options is uh, is uh, damages one of the basic principles of the state of Israel, being democratic or being Jewish. In any case, uh, w we. At our institute here, we launched a number of simulations to look at all kinds of simulations that uh, that would uh, um, uh, depict what would happen in a one in a single state with all of the gaps, with all of the hatred. How could two nations really coexist? And it turned out that in any case, we would. I don't want to talk about all the processes, but it it was that we would end up with a something like a civil war. One group would fight the other group, and perhaps even the third group. We might even have three groups. Therefore, we ask, why do we even have to reach that point? In other words, if that's a bad place to be, why do we need to get there? We we created fo focus groups in uh, with Israelis. We run public op uh, opinion polls and uh, uh, focus groups, and 85% of the Israelis don't want a, a single state. They don't know what they want, but they know they don't want a single state. You're saying that that's not what you you're not uh, what you what you're hearing a lot about the that that five percent uh they want a, a state of all of its citizens in the and the right i don't know what i would call it today it's already become center right but it's still 10 percent. they want a state with full rights for the jews without rights for the palestinians and uh, the rest of the public doesn't know exactly 
what it wants. By the way, we ask people to describe to us what that single state is. Somebody mentioned it to here, and I was very surprised to hear. S many of those people said that for us, that means going back to 1948. The entire Zionist project, wherever it, uh, from 48 till today is has been canceled, going back to 1948, and we're starting anew. What is the solution for you? So I'll briefly say this because we did a big project in the Institute here that we constantly are doing and maintaining as an Institute for National Security Studies. Part of our role is to put out to the government all kinds of uh, future courses of action so that they can, so the government can start to think about it and take them into consideration. And there's also a goal, and I don't want to offend anybody here, but we're perhaps the only place that constantly looks at the, at the, uh, at the implications of anything that we do. This method, to know that you make a decision and you check your uh, uh, implications, that's already a passe in our, in our uh, uh, days. But we are one of the few people that do that. So we created 12 different options. I won't mention all of them here. We basically checked which option. I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. If I were able to tell you what would happen tomorrow, I wouldn't my, uh, waste two hours here at the INSS. I'd probably be doing other things. So we created all sorts of, uh, we uh, sketched out different futures. And of those options, we chose which option uh, 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 coordinates it's uh, is as cons consistent with those futures. We consistent uh, was clear to us that this entire project uh, is uh, has uh, has been ruined. We understood that the t from there that two states for two peoples is the best people. How can you say that in Israel? Well, you've already created uh, studies and simulators, simulators AI and all that just to tell us what all all of that. So, so therefore we said. Let's think on this level because it's very clear to us. It's very clear to us at the INSS. And I think that this is one of the topics that there's where there's um, uh, consensus. And generally, people think that it w this place is very diverse in its opinions and in the background of the people here. But we are, v we are very consistent in our understanding in the in management of the conflict it will lead us to a a a certain complex of having a one state and one morning we'll wake up and have to understand that needs something needs to be done but we won't be able to the complex will be such that we won't be able to do anything danny talked a bit about that in some of the things that he said therefore the question is what needs to be done today because i'm not saying what the solution is i I'm not sure that I know what the solution is, but I know how to create a path that will ultimately allow us to choose between options, not for us to just be uh, tied to the option of uh, two states or two peoples. We did many things. We had many interviews with the Federation and that Federation, that kind of confederation and whatever. How do you create the infrastructure so that the state of Israel can choose between a range of options and not to... To, so what is that infrastructure? What's the solution? That infrastructure is a plan that we built that has four legs. One leg is about talking about the Palestinians. You sit and talk. Yes, the Palestinians, they're terrible and you can't talk to them, and, but you sit down with them and you talk. So you don't, you, you won't, we won't agree about Jerusalem at the beginning, but you can agree about many other things, about energy, about water, about green energy, infrastructure, to talk, to talk, and and to to start try to rebuild confidence in the in this first phase the second leg is to start to prepare uh, prepare the the terrain for separation i'm not mentioned here that in area c we have approximately a quarter of a million palestinians living in area c most of them are in cities in in villages and unfortunately they also have right Oh my gosh, they also have natural growth. Now, it's approximately 5% of Area C. Let's transfer those territories to the Palestinian Authority so that 99% of the Palestinians and not 95% of them will be under the rule of the Palestinian Authority. Let's uh, uh, earmark other uh, areas for development. You talked about, uh, Nana talked about breeding separation. Let's earmark that land for 
uh, infrastructure up until 25%. We discovered that up to 25% of the West Bank or Judea and Samaria, which is 30, approximately 35% of Area B, there we can use those that land uh, to benefit uh, Palestinians' living p conditions and Palestinian infrastructure without harping, harming Israeli settlement and neither that nor uh, Israeli security, not the Jordan Valley, not anywhere that's important for Israeli security. That's the second thing. The third thing is the principle that we basically say to us that we're keeping the keys to our security. In other words, if we learned that the way to fight terror is not to allow the infrastructure terror to grow. If we have to go in there and deal with that terror uh, infrastructure, if we have information, let's say that there's a labor laboratory uh, in Janine uh, for rockets, we'll go in there and take apart that uh, laboratory. But we would like to uh, to re re have what we used to have with the um, uh, security apparatus. There was a certain rule. In other words, if I were to say that here there's a la laboratory, laboratory, if you get rid of it, I won't go in there. If they do that, I won't. I won't go in. If I'm not going to let the uh, terror grow. I'm not. I'm not going to let the situation become like in Aza. We constantly maintain the area in terms of sec security and the uh, crossings and so on. That's the third leg, and the fourth leg is the dramatic leg. And by the way, in the when in our discussions with Palestinians about those ide ideas, they said to us, "Do us a favor, go to the Arab countries and convince them." to be on our side. I'm talking mainly about the Gulf countries. And now we have normalization. They're talking about normalization now with Saudi Arabia. Let's, uh, let's use this platform to do something positive to aid the Palestinians in building their abilities. We're talking about creating a responsible, functional Palestinian authority. Let's bring the Arab countries into this so that they support them. And by the way, so that then can also uh, impose limitations and impose restrictions on us too. But we'll do something that's bigger and more bombastic, and we will benefit from having. We it was very comfortable uh, for those countries that we've uh, we've pushed the Palestinian issue away. Let's bring them into the process, though, particularly when it comes to infrastructure and and concern for uh, the living conditions of the Palestinians, and also dramatic early improve Israel's status in the region. We'll be able to do have major projects and other countries will be able to join this uh, umbrella of normalization, normalization. That doesn't solve the problem, but it allows us, uh, if we want to do something in the future, we won't be stuck with the one s a single state. We will still be able to do things and you always have to build the infrastructure for the future. And that's certainly better than the current situation. Even if it's a bad situation, we will engage with it. It will be much better than the current situation because the friction, b the engagement between us and the Palestinians will be much better than what we have today. But still, what do you say to those people who say to you, what are you talking about? There's no partner here. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, beforehand, b people say that, you know, for this guy is an old guy. Abu Mazen, when he's gone, who's going to take over? Maybe the I Islamic Jihad will take over. What are you going to build all that infrastructure? Are you going to leave that to them? Maybe you're strengthening uh, the uh, future enemy that will be stronger than the Palestinian Authority. Uh, as has been said today, and I very much agree with that. Let's put Gaza aside. It's a completely separate issue. Uh, autonomy, that is separate. Canton, doesn't matter how will you call it, but it's a completely different uh, story will not allow Hamas to take over. Again, this whole fear will never allow Hamas to take over Judea and Samaria. The battalions will not travel to Judea and Samaria with the missiles and weapons. They will not take over the Judea and Samaria. Even if we do not have a partner, we can still start to shape the form of the field in the way that will have more mechanisms towards the future. I am not talking about the permanent agreement right now and the White House, the Photoshop. I talk about the breakthrough of certain sorts that will allow us different options in the future to actually realize the ability of the future agreement as well. We don't know what will happen after a bus. Maybe someone will come to power from uh, within, from the organizations that are not focused on refugees, that are more concerned about the Palestinian population that live at the West Bank. 
and we could actually do business with them. I don't want to actually close any direction. Very optimistic, very optimistic.